So um, Beth Weiss here again. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the golden rules of typing. That's the sheet of paper that we hand out to our patients. And we talk about actually how to really use your hands properly on a keyboard. We talked in the last video about how to set that up. But now I'm going to talk about how to really use your hands properly on the keyboard. So the main thing you want to remember is you want to be floating your hands. So that's why we were talking about the last, the last video to get rid of this uh, wrist stress. If you have a wrist stress, then even if you have a wrist stress, you actually want to float above it. So don't put your hands down on anything. Lift your hands up at least a quarter of an inch and start floating over those keys. Your wrist should be in a straight line, not deviated in either direction. You don't want your elbows out. They should be sitting comfortably by your side, just hanging by your side. You don't want to be pounding keys. You don't want to hear the, the sound of a key. You want to be very light touch. And you want to make sure that when you reach over to the outside keys, you're not using your little finger. So here's these arrow keys and anything over here and these on this side. If you reach with your little finger, you're getting to get a little deviation right here. You do that all day long, you're gonna wonder why you have pain right here. And the same thing here. When you do Control, Alt, Delete, you actually want to do a two hand type thing. Or if you're doing Control, F, F4, try not to do weird things, uh, kind of shortcuts with one hand. It's very awkward on your wrist when you do that, especially if you're doing it all day long. So stop doing the shortcuts. Use two hands to do things on the outside of your keyboard. Um, definitely you can use your little finger for enter or space bar, but try not to reach up for tab, backspace, anything here. So um, take off any wrist stress, bring it closer to you, and then just start floating above your keys. Keep the nice rainbow look in your hand. Try not to drop your wrists. Don't let them drop in the other direction as well. So keep them neutral, it's a neutral position. And then again, if you have this 10 key area, if you're using the 10 key area, try to move your keyboard just a little bit over, maybe two inches, so that your arm is in front of this for a whole bunch of keys. But when you have to go right back to actually typing without the numbers, then you can move it back. So shifting it back and forth is a good idea when you have to use the number pad for a period of time. However, again, like I said in the last video, if you're not a number pad person, get yourself a keyboard that does not have a number pad. And that way you can put your mouse right next to it. And so, the mouse also needs to be at the edge and you don't want your hand sitting on the table or the, the top of your keyboard tray. You actually want to be above it and not touch your hand to anything but the fingertips on top of your mouse. And when you move it, it's all coming from your shoulder. So it's, there's no wrist. Try not to use a wrist motion when you're using your mouse. Try to keep it straight, aligned, not moving at all, come up and around from the shoulder or a little bit of elbow. You do your click, you do your scroll, it's all kind of a floating technique rather than a push, kind of a swish swash with your wrist. It's more of a push pull with your shoulder, okay? Again, I like the vertical mice, so that's better for your shoulder, your elbow, your forearm and your wrist. And again, you're gonna do that same up, down, side, side but you'll notice that it keeps your form in a neutral plane. <clears throat> so having a vertical mouse is much better than the standard mouse. Okay, so if you can get out away from the standard mouse and get yourself some kind of vertical mouse, much better for you. Then the other thing is the monitor. So <clears throat> again, you need it to be uh, so that you're looking at it where the top of the screen is basically at your eye level. And we have, uh, depending on if you um, look at documentation, so if you're looking at documentation, you want to actually have it upright. You can get little document holders that can hold the paper up, which I forgot to bring. But they have little pinch up little things or simple document holders. 
and you want to be copying things where that document is upright. So never have it flat and look down. It's not good for your neck to do that. But always have it up. And then you want to make sure that it's on the side that you have a dominant eye. So your dominant eye is basically the eye that looks at that items first before the other one comes in. It has nothing to do with is it um, sharp or clarity or anything like that. It's just the way your brain is set up. So the way you can figure out how your which dominant eye you are is that you're going to put your hand like this and you're going to look at an object and you keep that object in your eye and your hand as you bring it closer to you will go to the side of your eye that you're dominant. So it might be left, might be right. I'm a right-handed person. I'm a right eye dominant person, but there are a lot of right-handed people that are left eye dominant. So you have to make sure that you know which side you are and that will determine where your documentation goes. If you have two screens, it's very important to know if you're a right or left dominant eye person. The two screens, if you're a right eye dominant person, need to be a little bit more to the right. But if you're a left eye dominant person, the two screens need to be a little bit more to the left. So it really makes a big difference if you're having your screens more to the right and you're a left eye dominant person, your left eye has to look at that screen and so your whole head's going to turn to look at that. So it's very important to know which dominant eye you are and you can test it the way I showed it to you, okay? If you wear glasses, make sure that they're appropriate for the distance that you're looking at your screen. If they're not, you need to talk, talk to your ophthalmologist about that, okay? Um, the last thing, um, if you are at a desk where you have to answer a phone, please get a headset. Do not put the phone on your side like this and, and type. It's very bad for your neck. So <clears throat> a headset is good. Or um, if you're just using your, uh, your real cell phone, put it on speakerphone or put it on a Bluetooth. But you should not be holding your phone while you're typing, okay? Um, and the last thing that I'm going to talk about is um, writing. So if you're having any problems in your thumb, a little bit in your wrist, and writing is a bother, if you just build your pen up, you can put it with foam, you can get that shelf, rubber shelf lining, make a little square and roll it up. It makes it a little bit softer and it's bigger, so there's less stress on your thumb when you're writing, so you don't have to put so much tension. <clears throat> if you're holding it like this, you can see it's really tight, but if I'm holding it like this, then it's not. So the fatter the pen, the better. And the other thing about writing is you want to make sure that you're writing where the paper actually is straight. If it's turned, your arm will go that way. If it's straight, you will write like this. And we're trying to keep our arm in an alignment to our body and not away from our body. And as you're typing, uh, writing, excuse me, as, as you're writing, I'm moving the paper. So you see how I'm moving the paper? I am not coming down and moving my arm. I'm just writing and moving the paper. And so that helps you just stay in one place while you're writing. So those are the, those are the golden rules of typing and kind of basically office work um, and I hope you learned something from some new, new information on how to set up your workstation and how to use your arms properly.